I am going to set that up when I'm recording. It should show you uh, uh, essentially like the target symbol or a recording symbol on an old um, cam uh, in the corner. Um, I'll always try to give you a heads up um, if I start recording sort of in the middle of things. Usually I set it up so it just starts recording at the beginning, but just in case. I will post the lecture videos to YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. Oh, I'm so excited. I have like 15 subscribers. Woo, one of them is my other account. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm just please so I can check and make sure they upload. Um, but uh, I post the links to the YouTube videos on Blackboard. I just find that usually it's an easier interface to follow them on YouTube. YouTube will also subtitle them, which is really helpful. So I am going to screen share the syllabus here. And again, I know y'all can read. I know y'all can go through this on your own, but I just find it helpful um, for you all to hear things explained in my own words. So we are going to meet in this class on Zoom as if we were in a normal class. So we are going to meet every Tuesday and Thursday, 1 to 2.15. Um, so no, again, if something came up and we needed to change that, I would let you know, but just plan on being here as if you were on campus and could walk to the classroom. Best way to reach me is email. Um, I like constantly checking it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the exception is now in the evening. I don't check it as much just because it's really fun family time, to be honest. So um, <laughs> my aunt got uh, Quinn a Kamala Harris book uh, for Christmas and that is her new favorite and she will say again Kamala <laughs> so it just makes my heart happy so we do a lot of reading and playing so um, but I will always check it first thing the next morning it's like the first thing I do when I power on my computer uh, office hours what I found works the best in these remote settings is rather than just having blocks where I'm staring at Zoom with no one there, <laughs> is if you just set up an appointment and then we can find a time that works for both of us. And I have 10, 15 and 30 minute appointments available. You can set up appointment even if you just have one question for me and our call could last a minute and that's fine. Um, but just to allow that conversation to happen. Again, here's where we'll find out what's going to happen if we do have a snow day. Um, usually I find that the banner on the top of the website is the most helpful because usually they have a link with more detailed info. All right, so your book is uh, Reitzman Psychology and the Legal System, the eighth edition. I believe a ninth edition just came out. I prepared everything off the 8th edition, plus you should be able to find used copies of the 8th edition, so I stuck with the 8th edition for now. If for some reason you can only find the 7th edition, um, I also have like page number conversions for that when we do the assignments, so let me know um, if you need those. But the 8th edition has been around, as you can see, since 2013, so hopefully you should be able to find used ones pretty cheap. Uh, and we will use the book in class, so make sure you have it sort of nearby. Um, I have like a little stack of all my stuff on the shelf next to me um, when you are going uh, to do this. So our learning objectives, we want to learn about the intersection of essentially psychology and CJ at this point. Um, and gain an appreciation for the ways psychology informs the criminal justice system. We want to critique uh, the authenticity or lack thereof of portrayals in the media. And then the other thing you all will be doing um, is to gain firsthand experience by participating in service learning activities, and which I know might be a challenge this year. And so I've got some contingency plans in the syllabus for that. Um, Blackboard is going to be your friend. It's where I post everything. It's where you are going to have um, all your assignments turned in. So make sure by the end of the day today that you're on our Blackboard page, it, that it shows up for you. If not, let me know and I can hand add you. We've been having some problems with WebAdvisor and Blackboard talking to each other. So like I said, I will record the lecture portion of these and put it on um, YouTube. I probably won't for the discussions just because I 
I want people to be able to express their opinions freely um, without worrying about it being out there. So, uh, but when I am lecturing, it will be on, I'll put those on YouTube, but I highly recommend you come to as many classes as you can, because like I said, we will do the in-class assignments. I don't ever really know when they're going to come up because it just depends on how quickly we move through the material, how, um, how many great questions you ask. So like how much I talk extra than what's on my notes. Um, so, you know, I can't like tell you like, oh, you will miss an assignment X day because we might not get to, to the next day. Um, I am going to let people make up assignments. Uh, and I'm also going to be very flexible about deadlines for everything until we get to the end of the semester. And then I have hard deadlines I come up against just because we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, stuff's going to come up for you. And I want to be as empathetic and understanding as I can. So, you know, if you do miss a day we do an assignment, let me know and I can get that to you so you can complete it. Um, so uh, because of that, I request that you don't record um, unless you need it for like accommodations. Um, I haven't had this problem, but unfortunately other professors have had problems of uh, students recording them and like turning them into TikToks and things like that. And that can potentially put us in jeopardy with our job. Um, so yeah, please know. Again, I'm recording it, so you're gonna have access to it. Um, I noticed a lot of you are already using your cameras. Thank you so much. Um, I would encourage you to do so if you can. I also fully understand if you can't, um, but it just helps to be able to see each other, interact with each other, especially when you're in your groups, even if you don't want the whole class to see you like snuggled in bed, it might be helpful to turn on your camera <laughs> when you're in the small groups, just to have that interaction. Um, but I also know that, for example, this time of day can sometimes get pretty sticky on campus with uh, everybody being on Zoom, so it overloading the Wi-Fi. Um, so I know my intro class that I taught at the same time last semester, they sometimes had to turn off their cameras just to be able to like hear me without skips and things like that. So I obviously understand the technological issues as well. Um, if you need to, feel free to use headphones. And again, if you're around other people and you want to express something you don't want them to hear, just use the chat feature. Um, we're going to talk about hard stuff in this class. Um, so we're going to talk about things like stressors on the major players in the justice system, like judges, the police. And we know in the era of Black Lives Matter that it's hard to feel empathy for law enforcement, right? But we've got to talk about it. Um, and so, you know, this is going to bring stuff up in us. I really want to encourage and foster those debates, but I just ask that we try to um, draw on the material, be respectful to each other, uh, and, you know, also I acknowledge there's not always a both sides to things, right? But just sort of being aware of the opinions that are out there to inform ourselves. We don't want to be in an echo chamber. Um, and also, again, drawing on the literature that does exist. So, um, you know, talk, uh, attack the information, don't attack each other. Uh, and I don't anticipate this being an issue. But again, because we talk about, you know, again, potentially really serious and uh, controversial topics, and some of them are tough. We're going to talk about uh, victims, so we'll talk about sexual assault and things like that at the end of the semester. Um, I just ask you to, you know, be respectful of each other, attack ideas, because you never know what that person or their family has gone through, right? When we're talking about corrections, you don't know if your classmate has a family member who is in prison, right? So, uh, you know, just discussing things and remembering that when we talk about criminals, when we talk about victims, when we talk about members of the justice system, we're talking about people. Um, and I think in this era of online stuff, right, it's really easy to think of things as abstract, but as psychology, people who are studying psychology, it's important for us to try to find that human element in things. As I've already acknowledged, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. I know there might be times where, heaven forbid, you get COVID and you have to stay in bed. 
right? Or you have to take care of other family members. Uh, you have to work your essential job. I'm not taking any points off for missed classes this semester. I will take attendance because academic affairs has requested we do. And you may get an email from me if you miss a couple classes in a row. And this is not meant to be a admonishing email or a yelling email. It will be a, are you okay? <laughs> Essentially like, do I need to send someone to take you to the hospital? Are you all right over there? Um, because I am genuinely concerned and I know several of us are sort of isolated right now. So I will check in with you just to make sure you are whole and healthy and don't need any support that I can offer or that I can direct you to. Um, you know, if you do have to miss, uh, the lectures will be posted. Please don't ever ask any of your professors, did you do anything? Did I miss anything? You didn't do anything important, did you? Because like in the back of our minds, we all just want to say like, no, you weren't there. So we just watched cat memes all day, right? <laughs> like excellent sarcasm. Um, yes, we are always in our minds doing something important, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, you can just say like, is there anything I missed? Did I miss an assignment? Those are all fine. Again, I'm pretty isolated here, so I doubt that I will test positive for COVID-19. I'm going to like knock wood, cross my fingers. Um, it could happen though, because my daughter and my husband are out in the world. Um, so if for heaven, it's, you know, again, heaven's word that happened, I would let you know if I was able and if not academic affairs would. Um, this is, again, a class that might bring up some personal stuff for you. Um, I don't recommend sort of airing your own dirty laundry or particularly not that of say your roommate or your teammate or your fellow sorority or fraternity member because we probably know who they are because the campus is so small. Um, so what I would say instead is uh, to, you know, you can make sort of general references, someone I know. Um, and I'm getting a message, my internet connection is unstable, so I might be a little grainy for a minute. Um, and uh, if you do want or need to talk to someone, I can offer general support like any other professor, but I can't serve as your therapist or counselor. Um, one, because that's an ethics violation, it would put me in a dual role with you. The second, maybe more important, is that Okay, I'm back, that was weird. Hello, again, like I said, technology, it's gonna get us every time. Dr. Jackson's been trying to get a list of the psych majors, which we can usually really do easily on WebAdvisor for the past two days. And they're like, oh, you can do it. And every time, nope, he can't. So <laughs> we'll see how all this goes. Uh, I'm glad it signed me back on. So uh, basically what I was saying is go to the counseling center if you have something going on and I can help you get there. Um, you're going to self-evaluate yourself on your participation at the midterm and final. Uh, I turned this into a Google form that you'll complete at those times. Uh, exams, your exams are all take home. There's a midterm and a final um, and they're open book, open note. They're not open friend. <laughs> um, and they uh, are all short answers. And some of them kind of cluster around a theme, um, but are just looking for short answers there. Please don't cheat. Please don't combine. Uh, Safe Assign is actually pretty good at figuring out if you like wrote it with somebody. I hate having to confront people about honor code violations. Um, sometimes they cry. I don't look like people cry. <laughs> Uh, and also it just means a whole host of things, including like you could fail the assignment or the class. Um, if you have anything on your file, you actually can't get Latin honors, even if you have the GPA. So just don't put yourself in that scenario. All right, so um, your first assignment to work with me is to um, do a five to 10 minute brief meeting set up using my calendar schedule. You have a month, a little less than a month to do this. Um, and you don't have to prepare anything. This will just be a chance for the two of us to 
get to know each other if we don't know each other yet or check in if I already know you. Um, and uh, also for you to get to know my scheduling system so that later in the semester, if you do have issues, you can set up an appointment, no problem. So this is 10 easy points that you get. Um, as I mentioned, there will be these in-class assignments. You get a freebie for one of those. So if you only miss one class and we do an assignment then, you don't need to worry about it. These will be usually five questions, often related to a video we watch, or maybe a short article I give you to read in class, and you'll discuss them as a group and write out your answers. Alrighty, and then your big thing that becomes fun and complicated in the era of COVID um, is that usually I'd just be like, just go out and volunteer 10 hours. I don't know how this is gonna work, we'll see. Um, I know that a lot of organizations are doing sort of remote volunteering. Some are letting people come in person still. It can, I've given some examples and I do have a list of previous places people have volunteered that I can, I'll post on Blackboard as well. In fact, I'm gonna make myself a little note to do that too. Um, usually I hand it out, but I can't this year, obviously. <laughs> uh, and then this is um, but it's entirely possible there won't be places you can volunteer in person. Again, if you can do virtual hours, that's great. Um, if you can find any place to volunteer and in your mind you can relate it to psychology and the legal system. I've had people volunteer at animal shelters and related in the past because there are legal issues around like surrendering your animals and animal abuse and things like that. Uh, you know, I've had people volunteer to help with like crowd control at events. Again, not something that will be as common, but there might be some stuff, right, this year. The other option is that if you have past experience volunteering, and I don't care if it was in high school or if it was last month, and you can relate that, you can count that. Because again, we're in this midst of this global pandemic, and it just might be difficult uh, to get places that are willing to have volunteers come in or able to have volunteers come in. So we'll just find a way to make this work. And this might be a great thing to talk about in that initial meeting with me. It's sort of like, what is your, your plan for this? Um, a really good resource will be uh, Brian Grinsky in Wesleyan Engaged. Um, he has some great connections as well. Um, but again, he might even be limited this year. So we will make this work in its own creative way. Um, so for next week, you're just going to come up with a plan to find your site. You don't need a site yet. You're just coming up with a plan of like, how am I going to go about figuring this out? Um, and again, one to two sentences. And then uh, the next assignment you'll have due for it is actually having found and connected with your site. And again, it could be, well, I can't find anything now. So here are some hours I did last semester or I did last year. Um, and that's fine. What you will need to find for now is um, someone to interview uh, who is linked with that site you volunteered at if possible. If not, it can be someone else uh, who's related to these issues. So, you know, a uh, child advocate, a law enforcement official, corrections officer, attorney, judge, that type of thing. Um, and again, if you are able to volunteer now, it can be just your supervisor there or your point of contact. Um, if not, it can just be someone you reach out to in the community. Um, and then you are going to interview them but before you do, you're going to turn in questions to me so that I can help you uh, tailor those to uh, make your interview as, as informative as possible. About halfway through the semester, uh, you'll have a midterm report of like what's working, what's not. Uh, maybe I signed up for this place, but now they can't give me any hours. Oop, I need to figure something else out. Or maybe it's hey, I could never find a site I could do in person or even online right now. So you know, I'm, I'm planning to use these hours I did in high school, and that's fine. Um, so your interview paper will be due at the end of March, and then you'll write a paper about 
that service learning experience again whenever you are able to do those hours um and that's due at the end of the semester one thing i'll point out to you that isn't always been clear to people in the past is neither of these papers require literature reviews so they're just going to be your interview with the person and stuff from class so our textbook and what we talked about in class so um, you don't need to go find primary sources, things like that. And then during our final exam time, you all will do very brief presentations about these. Um, in the past, when I've been able to be in person, we've actually just sat around in a circle and gone around the circle and people just sort of talk about their experience and that's fine. If you do wanna have a PowerPoint, if that helps you, you can do that as well. Um, but you get points just for essentially talking about it and then points for turning in a log of your hours. And again, if they were hours you did before, you can just sort of reference that, but turning in some sort of documentation of that. Again, usually this is something that's not that hard, but it is right now. And I really want to acknowledge that. So um, giving you as much flexibility as I can while still keeping this really cool project that students have genuinely enjoyed in the past. So everything's out of 600 points for the semester. Um, you can see the breakdown there. Uh, you will have opportunities for extra credit. We do have students completing their original research project. We'll also have faculty, probably including myself, collecting data. So you'll be able to do those studies. If you haven't done this for psych before, you set up an account at this link. And then when the studies are posted, you just sign up for them. The really cool thing about this system is at the end of the semester, it just lets me know how many credits you have. Um, you don't need to collect anything. The person who's running the study doesn't need to contact me. Uh, so it makes it really user friendly for everyone involved. Um, and if you don't wanna be a guinea pig, definitely no judgment. <laughs> you can write a short paper instead and still get extra credit. All right, so I do have some contact info on here for you for if you need any kind of accommodations, please talk to Chris in the LRC. He's also the person you talk to if for safety reasons you need to be entirely remote. And then here is the contact information for the counselors. Uh, Krista actually did a very short self care workshop for the faculty on Friday um, and so uh, I got to see her in person. I could see she would be a very effective counselor. So, um, and as I mentioned, please just adhere to academic honesty. So here you'll see, um, we sort of end up doing about a chapter a week, most weeks. Um, and we will incorporate things like, you know, the videos, episodes of TV shows, uh, when we talk about jury deliberations, we watch the movie 12 Angry Men, um, and then we talk about, you know, sort of the accuracy of these things. You can see the assignments for that big project throughout the semester. You can also see when the midterm and the final are due. And like I said, those small assignments will be in class uh, throughout the semester. Alrighty, any questions about the syllabus before I pop on over to Blackboard? Feel free to either unmute or stick your question in the chat. Alrighty, I'm not seeing anything, but please, if you do have questions, feel free to keep typing them. Um, but I will walk you through our Blackboard page really quickly. And so uh, here's what you'll see. I'm in student preview mode. So you'll find my info here. You'll find the syllabus we just went over here. You'll find PowerPoints for our lectures here. Um, so I actually uh, used to just write notes on the board for this class. And the last time I taught it, they put me in Social Science Lab 111 and I love that room. Um, but the whiteboard paint just doesn't erase that well. So I would write on the board and then I go to show a video clip and you couldn't see it because like the board wouldn't erase. So I just made uh, PowerPoints. And so I have these here for you all to follow along 
um, as we talk through the major terms. Um, here's where your exams are. They're already updated for the semester. Here's where you'll turn in all those assignments for your service learning project. I put everything in one place for you. And then here are some links that we'll use uh, throughout the semester. And I will probably add to that as we go. I'm always finding new things that are helpful. And like I said, I will add the uh, Zoom PowerPoint and the list of sites um, within the next day or two. Uh, so by the time we meet on Thursday, it should be there. All right, well, I want to give you all a chance to introduce yourselves. So I'm going to put in the chat what I want you to say, because I know um, that sometimes <laughs> it uh, you get to you and you're like, what all was I supposed to say? So I'm going to have you say your name and then tell me if there's like a nickname or a different name you like to use than what's on WebAdvisor. Um, I'll have you give your pronouns. So mine are she, her. Have you give your major. Um, and then the thing I've been doing with all my classes is what are you looking forward to this semester? There's a lot of negativity in the world right now and there's a lot to be pessimistic about. So I'm trying to like remind us there's light at the end of the tunnel. And it doesn't have to be in this class or even in a class at all. What you're looking forward to can be anything in the world. Um, so I am going to call on someone oh, and this I forgot this this morning too. After you finish, call on someone else. It just decreases the awkwardness, I think, <laughs> of like me trying to call on people and like no one's lists or, or videos are in the same order, so that doesn't work. Um, so I'm going to start with Erin, just because she is to my right. Um, so Erin, go ahead and introduce yourself and then just call on somebody else. And you're muted. All right, so my name is Erin Highsmith. I go by Erin. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I am.